Hi, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading from A Course in Miracles and we are on lesson, um, I think it's 35. Before I get into this lesson, um, I wanted to just uh, do a little reminder. Everything you learn about this work, every change you make in your heart, any scotch that your heart opens through this work and allows love to flow to yourself and then to others, it opens up the possibility that another's heart may also open. This is because we are truly all one, and the way we will heal the world is by healing ourselves. And we'll heal ourselves by releasing ourselves of the fog within which we have been living, and that fog has come about through a forgetting that those in power have leveraged in their advantage. So we are seeing that in real life and every day in most extreme ways. So the time is past due that we step up and awaken from the dream so that we can get back on track of creating heaven on earth, which is why we all came here. And here's a great, great quote about this work. A miracle is a shift in perception from fear to love, a return to love. Yet we are surrounded by mental mists. This is what a miracle is, a parting of those mists, a change in perception, a return to love, a decision to see things differently. Love is what we were born with. It cannot be destroyed. It can only be covered over, clouded over. A miracle is a clearing of those clouds. So let's begin for today. Reminder, uh, don't let this language get you bogged down. Workbook lesson 35. My mind is part of God's. I am very holy. My mind is part of God's. I am very holy. Today's idea does not describe the way you see yourself now. It does, however, describe what vision will show you. It is difficult for anyone who thinks he is in this world to believe this of himself. Yet the reason he thinks he is in this world is because he does not believe it. You will believe that you are a part of where you think you are. That is because you surround yourself with the environment you want and you want to protect the image of yourself that you have made. The image is part of this environment. What you see while you believe you are in this is seen through the eyes of the image. This is not vision. Images cannot see. The idea for today presents a very different view of yourself by establishing your source. It establishes your identity and it describes you as you really must be in truth. We will use a somewhat different kind of application for today's idea because the emphasis for today is on the perceiver rather than what he perceives. For each of the three to five minute practices today, begin by repeating today's idea to yourself and then close your eyes and search your mind for the various kinds of descriptive terms in which you see yourself. Include all the ego-based attributes which you ascribe to yourself, positive or negative, desirable or undesirable, grandiose or debased. All of them are equally unreal because you do not look upon yourself through the eyes of holiness. In the earlier part of the mind searching period, you will probably emphasize what you consider to be the most negative aspects of your perception of yourself. Toward the latter part of the exercise period, however, more self-inflating descriptive terms may well cross your mind. Try to recognize that the direction of your fantasies about yourself does not matter. Illusions have no direction in reality. They are merely not true. 
A suitable unselected list for applying the idea for today might be as follows. I see myself as imposed upon. I see myself as depressed. I see myself as failing. I see myself as endangered. I see myself as helpless. I see myself as victorious. I see myself as losing out. I see myself as charitable. I see myself as virtuous. You should not think of these terms in an abstract way. They will occur to you as various stimulations, pers situations, personalities, and events in which you figure cross your mind. Pick any specific subject situation that occurs to you, identify the descriptive term or terms you feel are applicable to your reactions to that situation and use them in applying today's idea. After you have named each one, add, but my mind is part of God's, I am very holy. During the longer practice periods, there will be probably intervals in which nothing specific occurs to you. Do not strain to think up specific things to fill the interval, but merely relax and repeat today's idea slowly until something occurs to you. My mind is part of God's. I am very holy. Although nothing that does occur should be omitted from the exercises, nothing should be dug out with effort either. Neither force nor discrimination should be used. As often as possible during the day, pick up a specific attribute or attributes you are ascribing to yourself at the time and apply the idea for today to them, adding the idea in the form stated above to each of them. If nothing particular occurs to you, merely repeat the idea to yourself with closed eyes. So again, this is a little, this is a complicated uh, lesson today. My mind is part of God's, I am very holy. And then when you uh, find other feelings that you're experiencing or uh, situations, uh, you apply that term after you've made the statement. So, um, for example, if you're uh, late, I can see myself as late, but, in, but my mind is part of God's. I am very holy. You just are breaking down these walls that have been built up of uh, perception so that uh, you're starting to connect with source and realize that uh, you, you are divinity in action. You are individuated divinity, each of us uh, that, you've, that you come across. Each human being is an individuated aspect of divinity. We are all very holy doesn't mean we act that way, <laughs> but um, it is our essence. It is what we are. And we will act that way when we all remember that that's what we are. And you, so you see, this is how we save the world. We heal ourselves. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll be here tomorrow for tomorrow's lesson. Namaste.